Cambodia is one of the three kingdoms of Indochina. It is bounded on the west and north by Thailand, and on the south by the Gulf of Siam and the China Sea. It is bisected by the Mekong, one of the great rivers of Asia. Geologically, it is a huge bowl of sedimentary deposits enclosed by the mountains of Vietnam to the east, its own coastal ranges to the southwest, and to the north, an escarpment along the Thailand border. The northern half of Cambodia is a vast region of open forest and one of the world's last great game lands. This almost trackless wilderness, but a minute spot on the Earth's surface, is the home of the rare Cambodian forest ox, or cupre. Knowledge of the habits and environment of this animal became the primary objective of the expedition. Almost all records of the cupre's distribution lie within the light green area of the map, a deciduous monsoon forest. An often park-like region of studded trees, maintained as a subclimax by the agency of fire. In 1937, Dr. Achille Herbin, director of the Vincennes Zoo near Paris, described in a French scientific publication the calf of an unknown wild ox, procured by a French veterinarian in Cambodia as a new race. Following this remarkable discovery, an expedition collected for Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology the first complete museum specimen of an adult cupre in 1939. In 1940, the Harvard Museum published a comprehensive study on the structure of this animal by the Harvard mammologist Harold J. Coolidge, who discovered that the cupre had many characteristics of a primitive fossil ox. These differences were so striking that Coolidge classified this unique animal in a new genus, which he called Novibos. World War II and other events prevented scientists from learning more of the cupre and the environment in which it has survived as a living relic of an ancient stock, perhaps ancestral to both the wild and domestic cattle of today. This film, the first documentary color film to show banting, wild water buffalo, gar and cupre in their native habitat, was made during a 1951 field study of wild cattle in Cambodia, conducted by Charles Wharton of Cornell University under the auspices of the Coolidge Foundation. The expedition began at Phnom Penh, the quaint capital of Cambodia, which rules a kingdom rich in fish and rice, but having a total population less than one half that of New York City. From the moment of the first talks with the Cambodian ambassador in Washington, officials of this friendly country extended the most cordial cooperation. Vietnamese and Cambodian script give the title and purpose of the expedition. In early times, Cambodia rested under Hindu influences. Ancient music, religion, and dance passed down through generations bear unmistakable signs of cultures farther to the west, of India and Siam. civilization at its height between the 9th and 12th centuries ruled the entire Mekong Valley and the tributary Shan states. Mighty stone faces still stand above the devouring forest, attesting the magnificence of Angkor Thom, ancient capital city of the Khmers. A parade of stone animals on a famous wall at Angkor Thom is but a small part of a pageant of gigantic carvings depicting the art and religion of a great but vanished people.
With 60 soldiers of the Royal Army, the expedition sought the Coupre and the other wild cattle in a series of surveys which often penetrated areas frequently raided and patrolled by bands of armed communists. Heavily armed base camps were then established as near as possible to the range of the wild oxen. To reach these areas required the cooperation of each village, which turned out man, woman and child to build new bridges and open the road for the convoy to pass. The main camp, which supported from 60 to 90 men, required tons of rice and dried fish. Fish trapped in muddy pools and wild game supplemented this ration. Fried flowers, leaves of forest trees and fermented fish oils boosted the vitamin content of the diet. From this large base camp, a jeep was often used to search the park-like wilderness. For longer trips, needing a heavier escort of soldiers, elephant and ox carts made a lively and useful team. Ox carts were the most reliable transportation. They were used to carry bed rolls and heavy bags of rice. Neither of these are improved by dunking in a flooded stream as we see here. But such conditions are unusual. Dry stream beds and parched throats are the order of the day in northern Cambodia. For water during the dry season is limited to muddy water holes. A thousand years ago, at least half of the present Coupre range was the center of a vast and thriving Khmer Empire. In searching for wild cattle, field parties passed ancient temples now crumbling and uninhabited save by the cobra and the leopard. Omar Khayyam may have been thinking of a similar half-buried ruins in Asia Minor when he wrote, They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where Yamshid gloried and drank deep. This spectacled cobra tried to take refuge in one of the large termite mounds so common in the home of the wild oxen. Threatened by the close approach of a guide, it rises in anger and follows every movement with rapt attention. Giant trees clutch and smother the centuries-old sandstone. These tall hardwoods provide an aerial highway swiftly traveled by a master of wingless flight, the gibbon. Male gibbons generally have a black coat, while female gibbons of this area are golden yellow. Here, the photographer is racing between the animal and its refuge in the denser forest. Gibbons inhabit larger patches of dense forest, scattered here and there in the common open or savanna forest. These clumps of heavy monsoon forest are slowly being destroyed by annual fires set by the natives. Without such fires, however, the open aspect of the Coupre habitat might in time disappear. parties entered typical Coupre habitat, the search for the elusive beasts was intensified. Cambodian hunters served as guides and trackers and led their groups, generally on foot, through mile after mile of trackless grassland and forest. Once wild cattle are spotted in the distance, a careful approach is planned. Constantly shifting winds of the dry season must be continuously tested with cigarette smoke. Wharton, a non-smoker himself, happily supplied his guide with pack after pack of strong native cigarettes. As each guide weakened from this treatment, another took his place.
The difficulties of approaching and photographing wild cattle who often feed in early morning and late afternoon may well be imagined. Few places on earth can claim a greater aggregation of large hoof mammals than Cambodia. It is a remarkable fact that four large wild bovines inhabit the northern and eastern parts of this small kingdom. Here, Banting and Coupre feed peaceably together. While Coupre only rarely associate with gar or buffalo, they frequently feed with the red Banting. These two animals occupy much the same ecological niche and have similar habits, but apparently they never interbreed. Banting are the most common wild cattle in Cambodia. An old black male can be seen running with this herd. Banting, the wild red oxen, range eastward through Burma, Thailand, Indochina, and Malaya as far as Borneo and Java. Banting have been called the most cow-like of the wild oxen. They sometimes feed with domestic stock, and instances of interbreeding are known. Banting are domesticated on some of the small islands east of Java. This herd is paying a visit to a salt or mineral lick near Kosker, Cambodia. A white ring around the muzzle is present in most banting bulls from this part of Asia. The skin of the bull is black, and in older animals is almost naked, which causes the animal to appear darker. Another peculiar characteristic of the bulls is an area of unusually thick and naked skin on the forehead between the horns. In approaching wild cattle, it is the female that must be closely watched, for she is often the leader and the watchdog of the herd. This one has a calf nearby, and should anyone make the slightest movement, she would whirl and be off at a rapid gallop. With its rich red coat, the banting is truly a beautiful animal. Although he's been waiting in the mud, this young bull shows the white stockings on each leg. These markings are found on gar and cupre as well, but are seldom if ever seen on other wild or domestic cattle. A prominent white rump patch is a distinguishing mark of the banting and is not present in the other bovines of the region.